Okay, let's walk a through note here, uh, some samples on from chapter 16 projects, uh, and, and then we'll move on to the next video. In Visual Studio, uh, there's two types of projects. So I've opened up the chapter 16. New, you can create a uh, website. Apps. And or you can create a project. Project. It, it, it used, used to be for ASP stuff, you would create a website that. here, like an uh, ASP.net. Working forms website. I'm going to start with this basic and, view that um, ASP has some, some basic features view. for uh, uploading uh, I mean, a basic grid view. This is the actually SQL data the source date. one and the one with uh, And there's a number of features you can't uh, first do I'm with open websites up this one. and the way the code uh, is set up. With the code this. behind and web in design pages. view, I will see a so grid here. We generally go to file, um, new project, nice complicated and uh, control that will just cite data under in projects. A grid we'll go us. under uh, expand uh, the number of columns and the number of rows as needed. So uh, uh, when I'm uh, seeing here, just says column web. zero. And, and then to like it, and then it just web uh, this application. Data, so when I run this, it should say a web application. So we'll be creating. So if I were to run this. And uh, the, the browser, one issue is that I will the see book, the, the data the actually filled in the with the book came and the as websites. And with so websites, you can't code. add app data and you can't configure certain things. Um, so I've converted so the this. chapter 16 project. And this is actually done the grid here, but there's no uh, uh, SQL uh, server it's control a little bit of work here. to do and that. So we're actually uh, doing some I will provide you the source code Although we've used the data grid here, we should probably automate some of this stuff. We're still using the textbook code. So I go and look in. The uh, code because here. again, I've converted this on the from page load a, event is some familiar uh, code which we site would have seen last uh, ASP.NET web application. We and, uh, grab uh, the, the new features in ASP.NET uh, connection uh, string from the web config file. We and define a the project uh, like command. We'll always um, create a web we create an website. SQL connection. We create a command that combines that SQL command with the connection we just created on uh, the connection string. I mean the connection uh, uses the connection string so these are all being tied together we then create a SQL adapter with this command uh, and then we create a data set uh, based uh, or I mean we create a data set and then with our SQL adapter we fill the data set with a table of information out there and then, so th this is all stuff we've, we looked, uh, we were doing in the previous class. And this is what we're going to get rid of uh, soon is this sort of stuff because we'll do it automatically or with a control. So finally, we bind the grid view. We say grid view dot data source is DS and grid view dot data bind. And this will uh, show that that grid view will only grab and display the database from here. Um, if I switch back here and look at the actual control here, so I can see the different properties of my grid, data grid, and we'll get into these in more detail in a little bit. So let's look at another version of this. So this was the data grid view. Let's look at it with the data source, uh, the SQL data source. So here's just the basic one. There's no data source, no other controls here. Now let's open up this one, switch to design view. And I'll see my same data grid here, uh, but I also see this little data uh, SQL data source here, which uh, will configure my data source. And if I go look at my code, um, there's no code in the page load event. All the binding and stuff is done automatically with this control. So in this control, if I look over in the parameters here, I'll see it's configured. Uh, there's a connection string uh, configured here. Um, that ties it into my database. In fact, if I switch this, rather than in design view, if I switch to source view, uh, I can see the select command that's being used uh, here and the connection string. And in fact, if this isn't working, right now it's using the Northwinds data connection string, which connects up to the SQL Server version. If I want to switch this to my MDF one, I can actually go in here and switch it to MDF and connect to the different uh, data source. So here's my M, my local MDF file um, that I'm connecting to. Again, we did this before, and if I just connect up Northwinds, because again, I've got in my web config room where I've got two different data con or connection strings defined for two different uh, copies of the Northwinds database. So again, this uh, view, let me switch back to design view here, uh, uses this SQL uh, data source control, 
which helps automate a lot of our process, setting up this connection, doing the connection string, uh, specifying the database and that sort of stuff. So that we'll look at ways of configuring these um, in just a sec. Let's go and look at some more of these examples. Okay, let's walk through a couple more of these examples. Uh, let's stick with the grid views uh, initially. Um, now with grid views, you can set a lot of characteristics. I'm opening up the grid view styles. I'm not gonna walk you through how to set up styles or whatever, but if you need to, uh, you can set up styles. You can set up styles for the whole grid or for specific columns, so you can format them uh, however you want, change uh, the layout, the names of the column headings, and how this information is displayed. You can control paging and how many are displayed on each page. So all that stuff can be controlled. Uh, grid views are very um, powerful once you start uh, working with them. You can also work with add editing features and we'll look at that. Uh, they have an example here of grid view edit. And again it lists our different products here. Here's our SERP and I can hit edit and I can change this value back to what, uh, what it originally was for example. And uh, so again, once I hit edit, it changes the row, it, it changes each of the display field to text boxes. I can edit the fields. It then changes and uh, gives me an update command. So I can add that information and I hit update and that'll save that information into the database using update query. Uh, so again, I can enable this update. You can also enable delete, uh, so you can delete fields here. And uh, when we get into our practice problems, we'll work more with those. So with grid views, you can do these various things. You can also do combine grid views together. Grid view select um, will actually show two grids, uh, the top grid view called grid categories and the bottom view called grid products. So now when I run this, uh, initially it'll just uh, populate the top view uh, grid categories. So this is like dairy products and meat and pro uh, produce and things like that. Now if I select one of these, uh, it'll display the products down here and populate uh, the bottom area. So if I select one of these values, different uh, this grid is then populated with more details. Uh, so again, you can base one grid on the selected values of the other. And you can see they've done some formatting here uh, using themes. Now a quick overview on how that works. Uh, so our first grid is set up with a data source up here. And our that's our first grid and that, that just starts right away. And our second grid here um, will have a command uh, that'll only uh, grab information for, uh, based on the selected field up above. So this grid, uh, again, just a quick reminder of the two grids. The top grid is called grid categories. That's its name, grid categories. And this bottom view is um, grid products. But it's the grid categories we'll want to remember. Now I'm gonna, this grid is tied to this data source here right above it uh, called source products. So I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna go down and find the SQL, I mean the select query, which will be some SQL that'll be here. It's selecting the product ID, the information for the products. Um, and again, there's a where class here where category ID equals, and there's a special at category ID. This is a parameter. And then my parameter value is here, category ID, uh, which will be that, that at category ID. It actually uh, goes into the grid categories, the above, a grid and finds a selected data key uh, for that. So it's finding the selected value up here and using that uh, as a parameter for this one. And again, this is all done without any code. Uh, if I look at the code itself, there's no uh, C sharp stuff in the back end, just using these controls. Okay, let's. So those are some grid views. I think we did. We did the edit, we did uh, the styles, uh, and I'm not going to do too much in the templates. Again, you can do a lot of um, more stuff with these grid views. I'm going to show you two other things, uh, a detail view and a form view. So these are two other controls. If we go to design view now, I have a, a details view here tied to a, a data source rather than a grid. And this will display information about a single product. Uh, and then I can switch from product to product uh, here. 
and I can also enable edit or delete so I can go in here and change this value for that now it's just updating that value it should have remembered what that value is oh yeah it's a tip I have to actually change. if I hit update there try that again I hit, the, hit edit I change its value and then I hit update to save that value okay so that's uh, detail view uh, and again you can specify what fields are shown in the de uh, detail view uh, and it shows a single product stuff. You can also work, uh, change the paging and how paging is done with this detail view. And then there's one other form view, uh, form view here. Let's bring that up. So again, similar layout. We have a data source here uh, and a, sim uh, a data view here, a form view. And again, that's just showing our information uh, in a simple form and here we don't have editing or anything enabled so it's just displaying that data for whatever so just another way of showing that data that we're selecting so our next step is to show you how to create a uh, one of these data SQL data sources and for example a data view or a details view and, and tie them all together so that will be in the next video